Interested primarily in regulating external trade, England let the early colonies govern their local and internal affairs by themselves. Less than 20 years after the first English settlers arrived in Jamestown, they had functioning systems of self-government. In 1619, England ordered the Virginia Company to establish a local representative assembly called the House of Burgesses, which was modeled on the English system of local self-government. In New England, self-government also arose out of religious ideals of pilgrims and Puritans. Before ever touching on shore, the pilgrims drew up and signed the Mayflower Compact, an agreement to form a body politic and follow the regulations agreed upon by the majority. It was a form of government, a form of government in which they agreed to elect annually the governor and the assistants that would be like their uh, legislature. The importance of this Mayflower Compact is, is twofold. One, it is an early example of people, Europeans coming to this new world, this English new world, and engaging in self-government. The second thing uh, that I think is interesting about this is that it was written down. It was a written charter. And this, too, becomes a tradition in America. The idea that basic rights are written down in some form. The New England town meeting, attended by most free adult males, became a model of democratic self-government. Very quickly, the colonial governments came to mimic the English political system, which subjects of the British Empire believed to be the best in the world. At the heart of the English system was the idea of balance, power distributed among the monarchy, or government of the one, aristocracy, or government of the few, and democracy, or government of the many, was believed to maximize the rights of all while too much control by any one of the three would lead to tyranny. The colonies attempted to follow this model in their own governments. Despite the fact that the royal colonies were officially ruled by the king and proprietary colonies by wealthy gentlemen or aristocrats, their assemblies took on more and more powers. They won the right to meet separately, to call out the militia, to introduce legislation, and most importantly, to tax. Control of the colony's purse strings gave the assemblies power over the governors who were dependent upon them for their salaries. Relations between the colonies and England became tense at times. The colonies ignored those navigation laws that interfered with their ability to make money. Angered at their violation of the navigation laws, King James II in 1685 had combined the northern colonies into the dominion of New England, abolished their assemblies, and placed them under the rule of Sir Edmund Andros, who shut down the town meetings, imposed taxes without colonial consent, and otherwise curtailed the privileges that the liberty-loving colonials had enjoyed during decades of English neglect. Three years later, the English kicked King James off the throne in what they called the Glorious Revolution. And New York, Maryland, and Massachusetts staged their own revolutions to kick out unpopular governors. The dominion of New England was dissolved, but Massachusetts never did regain its charter. It remained a royal colony with its governor appointed by the king. American colonists treasured their sacred rights as English subjects. Deeply influenced by writings of English Whig pamphleteers who warned British subjects of the threats of tyranny at home, Americans were very protective of their own assemblies and gave their own meaning to the concepts of liberty, freedom, and equality. But what most distinguished English from American politics were two things. First, the North American colonies were a lot more democratic than England. While only a small fraction of Englishmen could vote, more than 50% of the adult male population in the colonies were freeholders with the right to vote. Second, slavery and freedom grew together in America, one supporting the other. English colonists knew what slavery was, and in, and in seeing that, uh, knew what, what liberty and freedom were. They gave meaning and definition to each other. 